how you can have a butterfly wish. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and if you guys don't mind, can you please try to save your questions at the end? Um, we're going to go through a lot of information. We're going to have plenty of time for questions and answers. And then we also are then going to do the QII nurseries at the end where we're going to welcome you to walk around, look at things, ask us more questions. Um, so let's go ahead and get started, I guess. Welcome. We're so glad you guys are here. Um, as Carol was saying, we're very passionate about wildlife in our yards, our gardens. And I decided to expand on my landscape and do a pollinator specific garden. You know, there's a lot of research out there. I basically did my research, took um, ideas from here and there, and put in the nectar plants and a few I'm host prop, I'm plants. Prop, yeah. And then decided to do once I, I'm sorry, <laughs> stumbling over my own words. Right, well, thank you. Okay, once I saw, started getting caterpillars, I started getting chrysalis. I do more research. My husband built this enclosure for me, and I was able to watch the caterpillars go through their different stages and then eventually become butterflies. And that was absolutely magical, absolutely wonderful. Once they became butterflies, obviously, I released them back into the wild. And uh, so we just want to share that journey with you. And I'm going to start with the black swallowtails because that's what I have um, the most experience with, the black swallowtail. Their host plants are mainly going to be the parsley, which I have here. This is one of the enclosures. And we'll, this is the one we're going to learn how to do today. So we have the parsley. We have dill. And we're just going to break off a little piece of so you guys can smell that. You want to pass this around. That is dill. Oh, we'll do the interesting one at the end. Yes, yes, that is dill. And we have we have fennel, we have rue, and we have Queen Anne's lace. I do not have a sample of Queen Anne's lace, but that is also another one that is known to be the host plant for the black swallowtail. If you would like more information about those specific plants, I do have detailed pronounce of that. So if you want to know, well, how do I grow parsley? Where do I grow parsley? Where do I grow fennel? Things like that. I do have the handouts. More detail than you need in these handouts, okay? So, how did I find these eggs? How you know, like I said, I made sure I planted the host plants. The host plants, that is the plants that the butterfly is going to lay their eggs on. And when the eggs hatch, the caterpillars will eat those, those plants, you know, host plants. So I was out in my yard. I saw these beautiful eggs on my parsley. And again, doing a little research, I learned that parsley was the host plant of that mm -hmm. black swallowtail. So when I saw these eggs on my parsley, I realized, oh, I have black swallowtail eggs. What's nice about the black swallowtail eggs, they're going to be these very small little yellow eggs. And I am going to pass them around. I know you probably cannot see this photo very well, but we are going to be passing around photos, so don't worry. They're not going to stay on. They're going to hatch within about four to nine days. And after they hatch, they're going to be these very, very tiny, tiny, tiny little black. They almost, I've heard it referred to, it almost looks like bird food, sorry, but that's, all, that's what I've heard it referred to. What's really cool and so exciting about the black swallowtails, they're going to tell you when they're ready to hatch. So they're going to be these little yellow dots. And right before they hatch, they're going to turn dark. And in that photo that's going around, if you look at the piece of parsley over here, you can see this dark little dot. Now I know that these, that they're going to hatch. They're going to become these little caterpillars. You're going to see the eggs 
that they came out of are still on there. So it's right as they hatched out. And that is the first end star. So the black swallowtails, as they age, they're gonna look very different. So they're gonna go from these black little things that you can barely see. And as they age, they're gonna become a, a really more orange than anything. And they're gonna have, oh, I'm sorry. They're gonna have this uh, saddle right here. And it's almost, it's almost like they have little spines. So they're gonna look very, very different in their second and third instar than they are when they become the fourth and fifth. And this is probably what you're used to seeing because now they're locked. Now this is what you can easily see in your garden. You can easily see them moving around. You see my finger? So you can see how large these guys are. They get large. When they get large, what are they gonna do? You heard of the book, Hungry, 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 Hungry Caterpillar? Well, let me tell you, there is a reason they have that book because these little guys are just gonna eat. <coughs> they really are very little caterpillars. So I want to bring that up because if you do decide that you wanna try your hand at raising butterflies, the eggs that you found in your garden, you're going to take, you're gonna cut that stem, you're gonna take the whole thing, you're gonna put it in a, you know, a vase, you're gonna raise these, these caterpillars to become butterflies, you need to make sure you have enough food because these guys are just gonna eat and eat and eat. Telling you if you think you have enough food, get more because they're going to keep eating. And that's why I really like having the parsley um, parsley is very easy to get. You can usually get it almost any time. So if you see you're running low on food, you think you had enough and you find out you didn't, you can easily go to the store usually and get more. Try to make sure that they don't use the pesticides, you know, at, um, ask the stores, try to see if they don't, if they use the pesticides on their plants. We definitely don't want anything where they use that. So, but Another cool thing that they're gonna tell us, I can tell this guy is ready to form his chrysalis, getting ready to form his chrysalis. They go through this period and I mean, we just call it, I just call it J, where they're gonna kind of, it's almost like a J form here. When you see this, that means they're getting ready to form their chrysalis with the black swallowtails, you're gonna see down here, they have, it's almost like a, a silk cap. And that's just kind of to attach them to where they're gonna form their chrysalis. And I do have a video back there where I was able to catch them going into their last, um, their last malt here. And this is what the chrysalis looks like. They, the, the black swallowtails are chrysalis, they can be green, brown. They're not necessarily just green. In fact, most of mine were brown. Um, I think I only had one green one. And we're just going through the life cycle really quick here. And this guy is about to emerge from the chrysalis. I can start seeing, if you look really closely, you can really almost see the wings. You can see the coloring. Here we go. And last but not least, when they come out of the chrysalis here. Now, if you've never seen a butterfly come out of the chrysalis, you might think, oh my gosh, is something wrong? What is going on? They almost look like all little shriveled, right? Well, because they were, you know, all curled up. So they come out of their chrysalis, they have to open their wings, they have to let their wings. <laughs> so it takes a little while, but you'll know when they're ready. So um, you'll know when they're ready to fly. And if you look right here, here's the chrysalis that just came out of. It is, I want it to be. 
I want it to be. And we have more information to do the slide show. Um, and last but not least, of course, here's the black swallow cap. So that is just extremely quick example of um, their life cycle. Again, all these are my photos. So this is what I got to see, which was an amazing experience. Um, I do still have the chrysalis. All these guys emerged about at the end of March, beginning of April. Black swallowtails can overwinter. So I started getting these guys in October. When I found the eggs, like I said, I took the stem here. I clipped that off. I took the whole stem with the leaves, excuse me. And I put them in a vase with water. Make sure that you use tool or something at the top here. You don't want to leave a very open container. What's going to happen if you leave an open container? then your caterpillars could accidentally go in there. They can drown. You don't want to do that. So you, if you do something like a mason jar, which is fine to put your plants in, to put your cuttings in, you want to make sure that um, you have some kind of closed top so they don't drown. But you take your, uh, I just took them, put them in here, and waited for them to grow. Now, I did have eggs at different stages. So when I just had, when I had um, older caterpillars that maybe are in the third, fourth, fourth, fifth end star, then I definitely want to keep the caterpillars that are smaller separated because like I said, these guys are just going to eat anything and everything. So if it's something's on the plant, they're just going to eat it. They're not going to pay attention. They're just going to eat that, eat that leaf. So I kept my smaller guys separated just kind of in something like this until they got bigger. But we're gonna go over how to do a different style of nursery later on. That will be at the end. And Kim is gonna talk more about, about advanced raising of butterflies and meeting the monarch. So black swallowtails are fairly easy. Um, I collected 15 eggs and 14 overwintered and became, you know, beautiful butterflies that were released. So with that, I'm going to let Kim talk about the beautiful monarch. <coughs> well, and so I love monarchs. I mean, the reason that I do love monarchs is my grandfather was an avid gardener. And he got me to his house. He had to get a plant door. So anybody in the garden, you know, you walk around and show people the plants. Well, I totally wasn't interested in plants. I've seen them like, I don't know, 500 times. But, you know, Apple wanted to show me. So he was showing me, and uh, he called me to plant and a butterfly landed. He said, Kimbo. Everybody calls me Kimbo. That's my name. He said, You know what kind of butterfly that is? I'm like, I don't know, Apple. I think it's a monarch. And he goes, it is. He goes, and they visit me every year, and I think they're beautiful. So when he passed, um, I decided that I was going to try to do a butterfly garden as a memorial to him. Knew nothing about it. Uh, like I said, I didn't really care for plants, so I researched a little bit. I made a little garden. I was frustrated one day. It was stuck and dying. It was in the middle of September. It was so hot. I was being aggravated by wasps. And I was like, I am just going to rip all this up and I'm done with it. And lo and behold, something landed kind of close to me and it was a monarch. I stared at it. I didn't want to move. I had my phone, but no, I didn't get my phone. I sat there and cried because I just couldn't believe it. And I was like, I felt like my grandpa was saying, Kimbo, it's okay, you got this. Because that's what he always told me on when I was upset that I had it. So that sparked even more. And so I'm no city person and you will be able to tell by my PowerPoint, but I'm so, I will not read every word of that. <laughs> but so I went in full blown OCD Kimbo and then researched and researched and then then I was like, oh, these are so fascinating. The more I learned about them, the more I loved them. And then I found out during my research that I could actually tell by rearing some of these guys and that did it so i have been doing that for three years and last year i was actually forcing them to put these seeds in five and when becky tells you about having enough food i thought i had enough 
uh, was freaking out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll get to that later. Yeah. But anyway, so that leads me to, I guess I guess you want to see the PowerPoint, right? <laughs> I mean, I did yeah. work on it. While Kim is getting to the PowerPoint, uh, I want to let you all know you got three, a piece of paper when you came in. Uh, that's for three things to put on there. One is something that you've learned today you didn't know. The other thing is things that you've learned today that you can use or will try to use and then give a suggestion for other programs that you would like. And I would like all the people in Zoom land to do the same thing. Just send your questions and answers to us on the Facebook page. Okay, thank you. Yeah, let me get it for you. Meanwhile, you can just see all the wonderful people here. There you we'll go. Show pictures to everybody. All right. All right, I promise I'm not going to read all this to you. You're going to freak out when you see it, but it's okay. It's my program. So, all right. So, the monarch is called Danius Plexippus. I'm probably, I hope I got that right. So, um, Greek, it literally means that it's a sleepy transformation. This whole, the whole name of the species is actually their ability to hibernate. And Hi. I was running late, so we can't reschedule the thing. I suspect we think at 1030, but I texted you thought I was going to be back. Uh-oh. That won't work. Okay. <laughs> So uh, they're also losing their overwearing habitat and we are climate change, pesticides, and just they have a lot of natural enemies. Uh, I think everything hates the monarch. So they have lots of birds, uh, spiders, uh, wasps, the main of my existence, uh, ants, all these things. Um, mm. predators. Um, only less than 5% of monarch eggs will actually make it to become adult butterflies. Um, so let's talk about host plants. Host plant, the only host plant that a monarch caterpillar will eat is swamp weed. The only thing that they will eat. They need it in order to continue their life cycle. Which, you know, the black hole tails have four or five different host plants they can have a monarch will only eat uh, milkweed. All right, so this is just some of the native milkweeds to Tennessee. Um, my favorite is common, which I actually have right here, and I like common because when it gets big, the leaves are huge, and it's more food for these guys. Uh, this right here is swamp uh, and butterfly weed, and those are usually the uh, few that you can find in the nurseries around here, but again, make sure that they don't use pesticides. And tropical is another one, um, which is not really native, but anyway, uh, that's around here. But this is uh, native to Tennessee. Um, you also want to make sure that you got a ton of nectar plants because if you're having those plants, you got to have something when they do emerge, they got to eat, they got to fuel up for their journey. But also with that, when the milkweed uh, bloom, it's great for other pollinators. It's great nectar plants. So the caterpillars are just eating the leaves, but the blooms are great for all pollinators. So milkweed is great all the way around. But just like any plant, if you don't watch it, it can take over. You know, I have dedicated spots for mine, but I also like to grow them in pots. But just watch it out because they can, they can get big. I don't know if they're about six feet tall and they can spread and come back next year if you do want them. But hopefully you do want them. So just keep an eye out. But they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, and then this is just some nature plant suggestions. I love them to be kind of growing. Um, so just have some of those and plenty of those. And they're great for me. So this is the whole complete monarch life cycle. So when you get the egg, it's about three to five days. Oh yeah, it will be pictures of that one. Uh, and then when they go, the actual caterpillar stage is about eleven to eighteen days, and the chrysalis is about eight to fourteen, and then it will emerge. And all this is also temperature dependent. So give or take a few days depending on the temperature. Uh, so this is the actual monarch eggs. They are so tiny. They're about um, smaller than a sesame seed. Um, they're pretty white and they kind of look like a little bitty football. Have a magnifying glass or have a kid that has great eyes to help you because, yeah, it's hard. So and you can kind of look at them like you 
can find them on the underside of the leaves because that's usually where the female monarch will lay them on the underside of the leaves. But sometimes they're just random. I mean, she just like eight balls. So they could be on the buds, they could be, they could just be all over, but usually on the underside. But you can see, I mean, they don't even do it justice. It's so tiny. Magnifying glass. I wish I brought one of these props that I forgot. Uh, but the female uh, butterfly can lay between three and five hundred eggs. Uh, um, yeah, I mean they will hatch in like three to five days. So kind of like a small tail, the uh, caterpillars are going to have five stages, uh, which are kind of up here. You can see it's one; it's like super tiny. Um, they kind of will be maybe three to five days between each stage when they're growing. <coughs> um, and what they do is they call it molting. And you kind of see the caterpillar wander a little bit, it's kind of wandering off by itself, and you think that there's something wrong, they're kind of gone with the plant. He's actually molting, he's getting ready to go to the next skin star. So leave him alone. <laughs> he's shedding his skin, he's doing his thing. He'll find his food again. Don't worry about it, he'll be good. But yeah, so they do that and they have the five stages. You see, I call them butter baby plants. They pop because they're just. Well, they're great. They're babies. I mean, they're adorable. Absolutely not love them. Um, so this is the chrysalis, and this is one of the coolest things. It's kind of scary if you haven't ever seen it happen. So when they're getting ready, the fit day stars are ready. They're, they went up. They're, I call it J-hanging. They crawl up to the top. They J-hang. Uh, they'll probably do that about 14 hours or so. So here he is, J-hanging. And then his next step is he literally, it's like he's unzipping his skin. We'll kind of do, I call it like Afrin. You'll be on point. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, so you'll see him kind of unzip and he wiggles, and I call it like a pupa band. And he'll twirl around, and you can literally see his crystal here that's forming. And these are the different stages. He's kind of done. He looks kind of deformed here. He, he's growing, he's got a hardened. But so this is the end. This is after he's hard. It takes about 48 hours. You can do it alone. You don't want to touch them. They're going to, he's going to dry and hard. And he's going to be this beautiful gray color with the gold dots. And um, there's a lot of studies about the gold dots. I'm not really sure what they mean. I say it might be I don't know. There's a lot of different studies about the gold dots, but it's beautiful. <coughs> so there's the actual chrysalis once he's done his little, his little ad practice and his pizza dance. Uh, and so you guys are going to learn something. This is how you tell a male from a female monarch, which is great. So the male, you look for these two little dots here, which are scent glands. And here's the female. She doesn't have the dots, but she's even got the darker colored veins. So, and I totally stop my monarchs when they come up sometimes to see if it's a female and an egg or whatever. So I stop them. But now you know, and then the flashers are a little bit different between the male and the female, but I immediately just look for these two little scent glands. Uh, and this is just the diagram of the butterfly, the different parts of the modern butterfly. Uh, and <laughs> oh, so another cool thing about these guys is they actually use taste receptors in their feet, so they taste with their feet. I think that's kind of cool. It's kind of gross, but it's kind of cool. But so this is just some cool modern facts. Um, a bird's a modern butterfly. This is Flutter. Uh, they flap their wings about 720 times a minute. Uh, they travel between 50 and 100 miles a day during the migration period. Um, their uh, their wingspan is about four inches. They weigh less than one ounce, which is about uh, the size of a postage stamp or weight of grass. Uh, the adult monarchs hold them two to six weeks from summer, but the migratory monarchs will be six to nine months more than actually migrate. So. So the Great Migration, which is so awesome and it's so detailed, so I'm just going to try to dumb it down because it makes my head want to blow up. So they do migrate, the eastern ones will migrate to Mexico, but they do this in four generations. So the generation that was in Mexico that had went there and they go into something called dialogue, which they don't want to do, they kind of have like a hibernation. Kind of reproductive. So they make it there, they're a die hog, and they just chill out. They get there at the same time every year, between November 1st and 2nd. They hibernate from January to February. They kind of wake up, they mate, they start flying. They fly, 
This is about two a week. They lay their eggs. Mm -hmm. They die. That's generation one. Generation one. The eggs hatch. They do the same thing. They lay eggs. That's generation two. Same thing with generation two. You got generation three and generation four. So depending on when generation three was laid, it's later in a time period, they might go ahead and be the ones that are going to migrate to Mexico just like generation four. But all generation four is going to migrate to Mexico. These guys have never been there. These are the grandchildren and great 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 grandchildren of the ones. The life cycle just starts over. It's absolutely amazing. It's just, <coughs> it's, it will blow your mind. Do some research on it. I can talk about it all day, but we don't have a lot. I'm going to move on. But it's awesome. So, and this is just a little bit about the generation. So, this will tell you kind of the timing of generation one, two, and three. I'm thinking we see a few that come back for you. Maybe it's generation two, but the distance that we get most of that come back through is going to be like September through October, which I'm pretty sure they're going to be generation four and they're going to mine right on. But um, Monarch Lot and the Journey North have amazing maps, and they want people to be able to plot their sighting when they see them. Fantastic data. Totally go check it out. So, and this is, here's just kind of the spring migration. You've got your fall, kind of the dates, the different generations. So, this is our latitude for Chattanooga is 35. So, our midpoint that we're going to see these guys come through is going to be like October 2nd, but September 24th through the 6th, you're going to see them a lot, but it's going to be October 2nd. And so, keep an eye out for all our scenes for sure, but definitely go check these out. This is very north. Okay, so I'm going to do this this year. I try to do something different every year, and I'm going to tag these guys this year. So <coughs> the only do this east of the Rockies. Um, so you order tags from Walmart Watt, and you can either, like I have some that I'm releasing, I'm going to tag them, or there's a big thing, I think it happened in Gatlinburg in September, where I guess you can see a lot come through and catch the wild ones. So you can catch wild ones or Tag the ones that you release, it's awesome. Um, so I wore tags on Friday and they come in August and they come there. So that's my new goal for this year. But yeah, check that out. They have all the instructions. This is how I learned so much about how to these guys moderate. So definitely check this out. This is so cool. So, oh my God, that is so exciting. So I told you that these guys come on the same time of year. They've never been there. These guys have never been there. So they show up the same time, November 1st through the 2nd, which coincides with the Day of the Dead. So, huge festival. They believe that these are their ancestors, that they are like coming back. So, I mean, they make altars, they have graves. I'm not going to try to pronounce that word because it will be bad. So, but yeah, they gather at the grave spots, they believe these are their loved ones. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic. That's all I'm about to put it together. Total. So that's super exciting. Um, go look at pictures of that. It's fantastic. So, yeah. So that was really cool. All right. So now you kind of know a little bit about what we're going to talk about. Sorry. Sorry. I'm so anyway, grow milkweed or harass your neighbor. Whoever has <laughs> milkweed. I don't harass mine. I don't believe it's a lot. Mm -hmm. So, or, you know, if you know it's spotty, look at it and find it. Go, go get some, grow it. But make sure if you decide that you want to do it, have milkweed all the time. Make sure you have access to it and pesticides pesticide free. Um, so this is just some supplies. Um, you're going to go out and you're going to look for anything. You're going to want like a plastic container. It can be a yogurt cup. You can be a clean, whatever. You can collect eggs or cocktails. You're going to want that. Magnifying glass, number one. Don't leave without that. Um, I use mansion closures. Um, so this is the whole like floral rack to put like milkweed seeds seeds in, inside here. But I have to lock some stuff on it. I just set the whole thing up. I just lock it But I'll put that in there. Um, so this this is just some of the supplies. So here I'll show you pictures. So a lot of people will use these for the eggs. Um, for these, I like to do this because. You actually, if you find an egg, 
take the whole weed. Take the whole weed. Um, well, she gotta have milk weed. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say that 500 more times before we get done. There's the floral tea. There's my nation of Um, and like when Becky was talking about the different end stars, I keep mine. Um, well, I'll keep my eggs, and once they get bigger, I'll keep first, second, third end stars before I open them. I put four for three of them. Um, so this is just some of the stuff you can do out warm. Uh, Becky's super pretty, and yeah, I never thought about doing that. So yeah, I've been learning, I guess. But anyway, I'm lazy. But this is just some of the cool stuff. And I'm just mailing this. I'm going to try that this year. Just put like this bag over a pot and have some eggs or crab on the plant. I'm going to try that. Um, so that's just, but whatever you do, if you're doing it outside, you got to make sure that you don't hit direct sunlight. Make sure that they have proper drainage. You don't want the little guys to drown. And definitely, I mean, like, you got to have names to keep all those bugs out while on the farm. So, make sure you do that. So, okay, here you go. We're finding the eggs. Make sure you got your supplies. Um, check your milk weed. I usually check in the morning and in the evening is where I've had the best luck. Because uh, I'm watering anyway, so I'm going to check. Um, but a lot of times, I said most of the time, I end up just finding a gas oil because it's so expensive. So high. I got lucky this time. But usually, it's the best. It's just not the best. But yeah, just cut the leaves, put it in your container, and grab it. And grab it. Uh, here for the eggs, it's pretty easy. I mean, you can try four or five days, the three or five things we're going to pack. Uh, the only way you can tell with these guys, and again, for a bunch of my clients, is we're going to get them back to them. So that's when they're getting ready to kind of emerge. Just leave them with just a little bit of leaves. They should go. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Check that leaf. It's pretty easy. And they will actually turn around when they get there. When they hatch, they're going to eat their eggshells. It's pretty protein. And then they're going to, because they're still super tiny. And just keep a check three to five days. If you're lucky, you might see the black hair. Kind of like, but um, yeah, and again, milkweed. Do you think you have enough? No. Yeah, don't. <laughs> so this little booger here, I uh, actually found him on land at our nursery because I was going to get some extra. He's about a fourth end star, okay? This is what he did to my plant the next day. This was one day. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I mean, yeah, one day is the damage that this little booger did. I mean, I was super excited. I was kind of yelling at our nursery and telling people, I thought, what's going on? And I thought, this place is crazy. And he started taking pictures. I was like, this is so my plant. I don't even think we're going to buy this plant. <laughs> so, yeah, these guys, they grow 2,700 times the birth weight from that egg. So, one monarch can probably eat 20 to 30 leaves, large leaves, during their whole little five star life cycle. Um, but, yeah, a tip too, like if you're just taking the leaves, you don't have the whole plant, you can take the leaves, uh, wrap them in some wet paper towel and stand them in the refrigerator. They'll stay kind of fresh for a couple days because they want fresh milk leaves. You don't want them to be dry up. But, yeah, seriously, that's how much you can do. Um, this is what I do. This is I do my black tip egg, my first, second, third inch star. I just get this cheese container from Amazon. And then I put my fourth in there, and I'm lazy. Sometimes if I have lots of potted milk, I just put that in there because I'm just patient. Um, but you got to make sure that you you clean. You have to when they get like well, you know, like that. So these guys eat a lot, so they poop a lot. I'm not gonna lie, it's gross. <laughs> and if you want to be beefy, it's called a brat. But me, it's just got to be a little bit. Um, so you got to clean your cages like every day. I put paper towel down. Check them every day, clean the cage. Uh, especially fourth and fifth in star, you're not even going to see how much they poop anyway. Uh, so, yeah, clean your cage, um, get the fresh milk we have. I don't handle the cat feelers because I don't want to do anything to hurt them. So, but usually, when I show them the leaves or the plant, I just take the whole plant out or the leaves, clean it, put them back in with the fresh milk because I just don't want to hurt them because to me, they're just black people fragile. Not so much at fourth and fifth in star, but Regardless, make sure you wash your hands before and after. That's another thing. Don't no, it is toxic to people and you know, animals. Don't don't eat it. Don't let your dog eat it. Wash your hands because it's the sap. It's the milk weed sap in there. So wash your hands. Um. So 
This is just kind of don't overcrowd your your containers. You know, don't don't be too positive. Like maybe the same is kind of kind of liquid from the small ones. Don't overcrowd because when they go up and they are getting ready to do their day thing and they want to go reverse, they need room. So don't overcrowd. And I probably don't put more than seven or eight in each one of these containers. So just don't overcrowd. Um, because you're gonna get large. Um, I do you not love these guys? I mean, <laughs> really, they're just they're amazing. Uh, so then we don't overcrowd. And again, like I said, don't freak out if you're thinking, oh, this guy's still cooking. He hasn't done anything to it. Don't freak out. Um, so the Christmas part, when they actually go into Christmas, there's not much to do because they're just going to kind of hang out. <clears throat> but here's kind of what you can see when he's like unzipping his skin. And he's going up here to get really hard. Don't bump the cage or just don't do anything because if you fall, it's going to damage them because they got a hard in about two weeks And there again. And here you go, another side of five. If you're really dirty and you want to know if you want to sex them in the Christmas, so the female has a little wine right here and the male has a little dip. Magnifying glass, I'm not good at this, but here you go. Fun fact. That's how you tell if you really want to know. I just let it be a surprise. Because I know how to tell when they're adult, it's a lot easier. Fun fact, but again, the crystal needs about 48 hours to dry. And they don't do anything, they just kind of hang out. Here's the coolest part. So, okay, I'm going to go back. So, you see how these guys, this is Jake, all right? It's Jade and Go. He's hanging out 8, 14, 14 days, whatever. He's Jade. All right, he starts to start turning black. Then it gets translucent, and you can literally see. His wings from the chrysalis. That's so cool. So here he is. He's turning, it's cracking. He's coming out now. He's going to look a hot mess because he's crumpled. He's crumpled. You're going to think something's wrong. No, it's okay. He's actually going to be pumping the fluid through his wings. Leave it alone. So he has to be super, super fragile. It's all he's going to pump the fluid through his wings and then going to. Then you're going to look at all and then you're going to look like that. I think the whole process will take about less than 30 minutes for this to fully get painted. But it takes at least four to six hours for the wings to dry. It's very important. Just look at it. Don't do anything. Don't don't do anything. Leave it alone. He's got to dry. Or she. Very important. And they need, like I said, they need room because if after they start drying, you're going to see them flex the wings and they're going to be taking off the so these are all mine. I'm excited. These were all mine that I got to release. So like I said, it's going to be several hours before they're ready to fly. I keep mine the general, and I keep mine 24 hours. Um, so if they don't like to fly, if it's cold, if it's super windy, it needs to be at least 60 degrees. Uh, if you have bad storms coming or it's too cold. You need to hang on to them for 24 hours, well, longer than 24 hours. It's okay. They don't eat the first 24 hours. If you do have to keep them, you can do uh, some, oh, they're like, like fermented fruit, bananas, oranges, and like that. Or you can do some next The best thing that I do in the next time is I can do hot ball and put it with gator eggs. They like it. But that's only if you've got to keep them 24 hours. And most of the time, I'm in love with the animals. But yeah, make sure that the, the weather conditions are okay and then just kind of release them. But again, make sure that you've got some nectar plants for these guys that fill up all the heat before they, they move on. Very important to do that. Um, oh, and this is the doppelganger. Okay. I've been fooled. So this is the bipolar. You're going to see them around here. Uh, the only way you can tell is these guys have this little line right here. This is the bipolar. I mean, yeah, I've been told. But yeah, so that's the doppelganger. That was just a just a dog. Right, if you really want to learn, I want you to make sure you can talk. Uh, and then this is Becky's awesome DIY surgery that I am excited about. And because I'm a nerd, here's all my resources. <laughs> and I told you, and I'm super sorry, but that's why I did. But websites, I gotta call it out. Monarch Watch, Monarch Joint Venture, Dirty North. Um, you're not. I can't say it's Ricky Society. Uh, of course, the National uh, American Butterfly Association, uh, the Federal U.S. Wildflower. Uh, there's a great Facebook group. If you're on Facebook, 
Uh, they're a great group. Get wonderful information. And I've got a couple of books back there. I actually bought one about this one to read about the kids. I don't have kids, but it was the best like book ever. I don't care. I don't have kids, but it's okay. It's so dumb enough to make you get it. Um, and then how to read monarch books also. Great book, and then there's some great videos if you guys are interested in the great migration. Um, you can check these out and then supplies, my floral tubes, uh, the rice clouds, everything's Amazon. I got my own. And Joyful Butterfly is a great uh, place to get milkweed seeds. And they'll actually tell you which ones are native to Tennessee and just about plants. Wonderful. I think they're out of South Carolina. Great place. I actually just I ordered some more milkweed because what did I say? You can't have enough milkweed. So I just ordered well, more milkweed plants because my seeds aren't producing that well. Oh, and one other thing, if you do want to do milkweed seeds, they have to be cold stratified at least 30 days. Depending on which seed you get. So that's kind of a pain. But just so you have that, okay, I'm done. I'm going to shut up. So I'm done. <laughs> Wait, am I done? I'm done. There's no more slides. I'm done. <laughs> Uh, we're going to take what we'll do is we'll take uh, three questions in here and then uh, Natalie is monitoring with Suzanne and we'll take the questions that are on Zoom. So who has the first question in here? Okay. Other than competing for food, does have a that I do not know. Um, I think about I wouldn't say we're just kind of competing through, but I don't think from a different species. Yeah. Not that I know of. Yeah, I think that's really true. But yeah, I think yeah. it's pretty docile. I mean, you know, unless you're eating all their milkweed or yeah. steel or parsley or something. Because they're when they're little like that, they don't they can't really see. It's they're going straight by like smell. So mm -hmm. I don't even, they're not even doing that to be jerks. They're just like, oh, oh great. Oh, just, I thought it was a weed. You're in the way. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. They're just, but I don't know. That's an interesting question. Uh, I'll be learning your research there. <laughs> okay. Next question. Anybody else in here? Okay. So the whole uh, idea here is to increase the, the output of butterflies as opposed to just letting them do their thing on their own without intervention. I like to, I, I, to me, I think I'm doing both. I'm mm -hmm. making sure that I plant lots of milkweed to do both because I can't save every one of them. I, I, I will never have any milkweed to plant, but it's also a learning experience for me. If it's something that I can learn and share with other people or even report to some of these societies who have done all this scientific work, then I feel like I'm doing my part. And plus, it's personal. It's personal for me because of my grandpa. So, and I love it. It, it has turned into a passion. If I can, if I can release one butterfly that is healthy, I feel like I've done something. Because hopefully it's going to go on and catch some more, and they're going to do their great journey. So it's personal, and I love it. Yeah, and it's the educational. I was excited. excited. Your neighbors see what you're doing. They want to know. They start taking either planting or not using pesticides, herbicides. So um, it's full of like mm -hmm. I'll tell you from my personal experience with doing it, because I had a lot of milkweeds. I had a lot of caterpillars. I mean, a whole lot. I mean, they did. They just destroy everything. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful. But because there was no way to preserve them, nature does take care of it. And I never saw a single one ever get to the end. I'm sure it probably some of them did somewhere in my yard that I didn't know. But where the actual plants were, uh, I mean, the caterpillars uh, were eaten. Uh, by you know the birds and everything else so this is a neat way and if you've got children and grandchildren and you need to teach them about nature and so forth there is no better way than let them watch something about a butterfly and or ants get you an ant colony or butterfly it's fascinating for children and it gets them outside second qu third question in here marjorie thank you <laughs> <laughs> I'm if, if, if i find What's wrong with Kelly's book? Can I put it in that enclosure? Where do I keep it? You just don't want to say it in full sun, right? It's right. Protected spot. Uh, 
Now, I, I would advise this is on my porch. My porch is covered and it is attached to my porch and even these. So I would just probably take it onto your porch if you have a covered porch and you're going to be able to watch it. You do want to watch it. You want to look at it every day. And especially if there's still the caterpillars, you're going to want to do something because, like I said, they're going to eat a lot. They are going to poop a lot. So you just you do you don't just say, oh, that's great. You just leave it. So just kind of like put it on your porch so you can watch it, you can clean out the grass. And what you want to see them. Right. The sun or the shade. I want to do a little bit of because you yeah. get like bad rainstorms or right. something. So you still want to provide some shelter for them because out of the wild they're going to probably be well, in thick milkweed right. bushes. So they're going to kind of they're, they're going to need some protection. So you yeah. know, absolutely. And you, like I said, you got to make sure they're not going to get drowned. So yeah, you got to think about those. Things. Yeah, just you can keep it in your garden <laughs> to bring them there, and then just you know maybe. No, I can see and I think it. some people, if they have like a big milkweed pipe or something, they'll get the, like the, like the raised bed, they'll get like a big mesh container and just like segregate those because they'll all have some eggs or caterpillars. So they'll just kind of do that like out in the raised bed. So it kind of protects them from, I guess, a lot of bird rain or something. So I don't know. It's just play around with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, questions from home. Natalie, do we have any? Did Suzanne send us any through? I don't, I don't, I don't see anybody who no, wants, okay. if anybody wants to unmute and ask a question, feel free. Yeah, I'll just give Kim a heads up that uh, I'll be in touch with her. She works at Greg, so we need to have a. Okay. A butterfly day? Well, you know, uh, we need to have a uh, tagging event. Right. Okay. Kim? Okay. Okay. okay, yes, please do. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, let's 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 do it and uh we'll plan it. You can give us y'all can give us class and just need a time frame and let's get the public and hip hip hooray make more life. Ooh, okay, no pressure. Okay, <laughs> questions in here. I, I'm sorry, let me, me take in my head anymore. Okay. This is not a question, it's something I wrote about a little more than a year ago. And extensive foresting is now taking place in Mexico where they migrate to, which is destroying their habitat. You're absolutely right. So, um, one of the organizations, the National uh, Wildlife Foundation, so they actually, people can donate and they're trying to, they have money set aside to try and pay uh, some of the people that do illegal logging because, you know, these people don't have a lot of income. So, they're doing a lot of illegal logging. In the habitat, so they're trying to do things to uh, help supplement their income to say, you know, hey, please don't, don't do this, don't cut this down. But it's still happening. And there's uh, one of the books back there, there's uh, this lady actually started working with some of the children in the So, come up with an idea, they started using painted rocks and uh, like butterflies. So, they would paint rocks and butterflies, and so you can actually go buy those. And if they take that money and the kids actually will give it to their parents just, just to help not to do things like cut down the, the trees and the forest and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's sad they're running out of habitat there, too. Um, some of it's protected, but they say a lot of times that even the logging will go on at night time. Um, so, yeah, so there's that, but there's lots of organizations that are trying to do things to hopefully it's not going to happen. But, yeah, it's very sad. <laughs> Uh, there, we just lost a couple hundred acres close to us with the logging and so forth. So it's everywhere. That's why it's important that for us to plant in our yard as many trees and so forth, because if we don't have those trees, we don't have oxygen. You know, so it's why it's important for us to do what we can on our section. Anybody else? Okay. Can you compost the grass? Yes, you can. I haven't done it because, well, I just haven't done it. I, I didn't think about it. Oh. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna, well, all right, anyway, this is the best thing ever. It is a keyboard like a uh, vacuum. It cleans up the grass. So then it will save the grass and then you could compost it. But yes, grass is compostable. Yeah, it's the best thing ever. You can charge it. Yeah, before you use that though. <laughs> and honestly, sometimes it's so big, it looks like rabbit food. Yeah. It's crazy. You're not even gonna believe it. But anyway, <laughs> these are great. 
This is very, like, I don't know, cheap. Yes, ma'am. Okay, this isn't a question, but when I was in Florida, I did Monarchs with a friend, but I'm lazier than you. Um, I, I just did it in my garden. Um, we had a lot of problems with aphids, though, in milkwood. Yes. Okay, I would just hose them off. That's I what I did. I, use. I hate them, but, and it, but if it was really bad, like uh, they were on like one big leaf or something, I would just break that uh, leaf yeah. off. And break it but off. I, I, yeah. I want to hack my girlfriend's book. I don't know what book you have back there for kids, but she wrote a book, Look What Happened While I Was Sleeping. And it's about the monarch's life cycle. And um, it's I'll for children. That. And well, so I'm gonna read it. I got one back there that I got for me. I'll totally read it. Do you have a book? I don't have that, no. but I do have yeah. to read it. And, and anyhow, she wrote that and she's in charge of the uh, chief master gardener in Florida and she's in the butterfly things and they have a big butterfly garden down there. And so I just I had a her book for, but it's really good and it's cute for kids. And that uh, you're right about milkweed. I mean, they will. But for people who don't want to go through this, right. like we had one of those cages, and I had it on my lanai, and the grass was driving my other half crazy. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Uh, uh, not in, not on the lanai." Right. So I just did it outside, and I'm sure, but. You know, my neighbor got into it and everybody was watching all my butterflies. And, and and she would like, you know, she would see a chrysalis. They would all be on the top of the house or under a bench and she would like be, you know, yelling at me, come out here and look at this, we have another baby. So it is fun. It's uh, you know, and it's interesting to watch. Okay, so and if, thank you. If you nobody don't want to do this, don't if you do Anything, just plant milkweed. Yeah. yeah. Plant milkweed. Right. Even if it's just or parsley. Or parsley. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> These guys have so many more hose plants. I mean, just, just plant something. And you know what it is? It will be ugly. Uh, it will be ugly. Uh, For a while. It's not yet. But it's when it blooms, I mean, <laughs> just, just plant something. I mean, it's great. Another question? I believe that's the root. That's the root. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I forgot, y'all. This is Steve, okay? Steve is my ambassador. And mm -hmm. uh, that's, I forgot, I named every name. But I got him at the Garden Expo, and I was so excited. It was meant to be, you know, I named him Steve because the first caterpillar I saw in my garden, I named him Steve. I don't know if it was more than wrong, whatever, second. But whatever. So I felt like I needed a new Steve. And this lady was eyeballing after eyeballing. I was like, oh, uh -uh, lady, that's Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is Steve, sorry. I mean, everything. In my greenhouse, I have a greenhouse. This is my Charlotte. That's my grandma. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Everything good that comes out of there is my grandma Charlotte. So. Captain Nemo, so, you're like, Any more questions uh, today? Can I just say one thing? Yes. Um, Lisa Lemsa just noted that monarch populations are down 95% from the 1970s baseline. She is for the last one I said it was 90%. So it's 95 to 97, which is. A new study, so yeah, sobering. Plant milkweed, please. I have some peas, I will help. I mean, yeah, I harass my neighbors and tell them all the plant milkweed in the yard and tell them water it if they won't let me do it. Okay, I'm uh, for the audience at home, I'm going to walk around and film a few things that they brought to a show. Uh, but after that, we'll be cutting it off because uh, some people have brought some pots and they're going to do some hands on work. The room will get so noisy that there's no way I can film it and so forth. Uh, so basically uh, our presentation, unless you're helping with, we want to make your own uh, little home or butterfly is complete for today. And we thank everybody for coming. And I know that you have certainly enjoyed it and give the ladies a, a good hand for it. Please leave your papers with your uh, questions. Um, your, information on the little table back there with my husband Claude and uh, for the things that you learned today or things that you think you can do or for classes, other classes that you would like to, for us to have uh, here. Next next month is uh, <laughs> next month is Ann Brown with uh, the beneficial uh, insects and, and similar to this poll here with the pollinators. Ann is very much into uh, saving the pollinators and as, as these girls are uh, with their uh, yard and everything. So you'll enjoy that. She speaks a lot about a lot of different plants. So she's very, very interesting. So that's next month in July. Thank you. Is, is the full PowerPoint out on the internet? I will be happy to share it. I want to read it. I read it. I read it.
This is one of the parts. And what they've got is they've used a tomato cage. And the tomato cage is then covered in tulle, similar to the bridal veil tooling. And that's what will make the homemade little uh, little house for them unless you can get a container or something like Becky. And that's pretty much what we've got. The books I'll show back here. Here are some of the books that they recommend, and you heard one that Patty mentioned a while ago for the children. And with that, we will be gone for the day. We thank you so much. Please tune in in July for our program on the beneficial insects with Aaron Brown. We're out. Thank you.